The generally accepted advantage of having a shaft drive bike like the R1200GS BMW is that it's maintenance free. Well that's not necessarily true, as the final drive of a GS has to be serviced if you want it to function properly and be reliable. The GS, like a car, has a tail shaft with universal joints that connect the gearbox to the final drive. And unfortunately, where the tail shaft connects at either end, it is exposed to the elements, particularly at the final drive end. And if it, if it isn't lubed correctly, it will rust and seize to the spline of the diff, which is exactly what's happened to this bike. This has been a dealership service bike, so I can only assume dealerships don't service this properly. So that's why we made the video, to show you how to do it yourself. You will need a small range of tools including T30 to T55 torque drivers, a tension wrench, waterproof grease and GL5 rated final drive gear oil. The first thing you do is remove the rear wheel. This is followed by removal of the rear mud guard which is held on by three T30 bolts. Then what I do is drain the oil. The filler hole is opened with the T40 wrench and the drain plug is removed with the T45 wrench. Why they're different I have no idea. If the diff has been filled properly, it will drain around 180ml of gear oil for these models. The next step is to undo the two T40 bolts holding the brake caliper on and then remove it from the disc. You'll notice I used some rope to tie it up and away from the drive shaft. The lead with the speed sensor on the end runs below the caliper and is bolted into the inside of the rear final drive uh, with a T30 bolt. It needs to be removed and placed out of the way. I just wind the cable up through the frame so it doesn't drop down. Now the linkage that holds the final drive in position needs to be disconnected using a T45 wrench. Before I do that, I tie up the final drive to the frame so it doesn't drop down as standard practice. We disconnect the linkage by removing the bolt. Incidentally, this is one of the bolts we tension carefully to the correct torque when we put it together again. The linkage will sit out of the way without doing anything to it. Because the tail shaft on this bike is seized to the spline of the final drive, the diff itself won't fall down as it would normally. To get to the pivot bolts, you have to remove the plastic cover on the outside. It's a simple plastic disc that pushes into the hole in the bolt. I use a blade to get under the edge and remove it that way. The outside hex requires a 24mm socket and on the inside there is a T55 bolt that needs to be undone and removed. Once that bolt is, is out, the last piece to remove is the centre sleeve of the roller which is on the inside of the final drive. I simply use a quarter drive extension to tap it out. When that sleeve comes out, the final drive is no longer attached to the drive shaft. On this bike, the tail shaft is seized to the spline of the final drive, so the entire tail shaft has to be removed with the diff. I found it fairly easy to do if you open up the back of the top rubber boot and use a screwdriver to lever the shaft off the spline. On this bike it slips off quite easily. Now we can remove the final drive with the tail shaft attached. When we unseize the shaft from the spline we won't need to do this again. You can see we can't actually pull the tail shaft off the spline because it's rusted on. It should just slip off like it did at the front. So in this case we have to force it off and yes it was quite a challenge. You know, one of the real challenges you get is if it's rusted in, like this one was really heavily rusted in here and it was almost impossible to move. Well, you've got a boot that sits in here, you know, it actually sits this way, and unless you can get in here right, and seal it properly, then you get moisture inside the back end here uh, where the drive shaft actually meets the final drive. So what we've got to do is you've got to detach that in order to be able to get in there. So the way we did it was basically this. This was jammed on here and rusted, so we were able to come through the hole at the back and put a drift here and basically just knock it out that way. So, you know, that'll give you an indication of how you can get it out if you do have one that's as stuck as this one. If you have a wire brush and a Dremel, then the best thing you can do is clean and polish the splines. That way they will never seize again if they're looked after. Before any assembly, we want to clean all of the areas as good as we can, including the rubber boot itself. With the splines clean, we can apply some sticky waterproof grease to the final drive spline and to the inside of the tail shaft spline at both ends. Give it a test and see if it slips on easily. We also apply the waterproof grease to the seal areas of the rubber boot to help with preventing the entry of water into the tail shaft. I do it on both sides of the, or both ends of the boot then the boot is reattached to the final drive. The other area that needs greasing is the pivot point. 
It has a bearing on the inside which I lubricate with a high quality bearing grease. Reassembly on the bike is a fairly straightforward task. First we insert the tail shaft back into the drive shaft tube and reattach it to the gearbox spline. The final drive is then reattached at the pivot point. A little bit of jiggling and you'll be able to line up and insert the bearing sleeve on the inside. I give the bolt a bit of a clean and apply some Loctite. The male and female parts of the pivot bolt are inserted and tightened to a torque of 100 Newton meters. The tricky bit is lining up the tail shaft with a diff spline so that it slides on. I found it easy to do when the universal joint part of the tail shaft is aligned vertically so it can bend directly downwards. This helps line it up with the spline. Once the shaft is on the spline, all we need to do now is reconnect the main linkage and then tighten the bolt to a torque of 60 Newton meters. Before we put oil in the final drive, we reattach the rear brake caliper, feed the speed sensor wire underneath the caliper and then attach the sensor at the inside of the final drive. I then tighten brake caliper bolts and torque them to 38 Newton meters. Now for the oil. This model GS requires 180 mil of gear oil. The manual recommends 80W90 oil. I use GL5 rated Penrite 80W140 fully synthetic gear oil. Just make sure the oil you use is GL5 rated and that you don't overfill it. One thing worth checking if you're going to do this properly is the cleanliness of three things. The wheel retaining bolts, the inside of the rim hub itself, and the tape it holds where the wheel is bolted to the final drive. The key to attaching the rear wheel is to tighten and then torque the retaining bolts correctly. They are torqued to 60 Newton meters and we do it in an opposite side pattern of tightening. The final piece to attach is the mudguard. One last thing to do, check everything is tightened including the drain plug and filler cap and then pump the rear brake to make sure it's ready to go. That's it, final drive maintenance on the R1200 GS. Hope you got something out of that. Cheers, see you in the next video.